Hi guys, this is Nilesh from IDeserve. Today let's look at the problem of repeated DNS sequences. We'll solve this problem in order of n time complexity. Let's try to understand the problem first. A DNA is composed of series of nucleotides abbreviated as A, C, G and T. For example, one of the DNA sequences could be A, C, G, A, A, T, T, C, C, G. We have to write a function to find all the 10 letter long sequences or substrings that occur more than once in a DNA molecule. For example, if we are given input as this DNA sequence, then as you can observe, this 10 letter sequence is same as this 10 letter sequence, right? Because in both sequences, 5 A's are followed by 5 C's. Therefore, this 10 letter sequence would be added in the output. Similarly, this 10 letter sequence is same as this 10 letter sequence. Here, 5 C's are followed by 5 A's and this again is added in the output. Now let's look at the approach to solve this problem. We will be using the same input sequence. To find the 10 letter sequences which occur more than once in this given input, what we can do is, we can check for duplication of all valid 10 letter sequences. How can we do that? We can slide a 10 letter window across the given pattern. The 10 letter window would look like this and we will slide this window across the pattern starting from leftmost end. And when we are looking at the sequence in the current window, we check if it is already seen. If it is already seen, then we add it to the output. So initially we start with empty scene set. We check if the current sequence that is 5 A's followed by 5 C's is already in the scene set. It is not. Therefore what we do is we add this sequence in the scene set and advance the window by one character. At this point we again check if the sequence in the current window is already seen. As you can see the current sequence that is 4 A's followed by 5 C's followed by a single A is not already in the scene set. Therefore what we do is we add this into the scene set and slide the window by one character. We repeat these steps until all valid 10 letter sequences are covered. Now at this point, the current sequence that we are looking at is 5 A's followed by 5 C's. And as you can observe, this sequence is already in the scene set. Therefore, we add this current sequence in the output as well. Similarly at this point, when we are looking at the sequence 5 C's followed by 5 A's, as you can see, this is already in the scene set and therefore, we add this sequence in the output and as I have said we repeat these steps until all valid 10 letter sequences are covered and return the output. Now what would be the time complexity for this approach? Let's try to focus on this letter A. This letter A would be part of this sequence and then this sequence and so on. In all it would be part of 10 such sequences. So to generalize every letter of the pattern except few letters of the start and end are read and included in 10 windows. Therefore, if m is the length of given sequence and n is the length of the duplicates to be searched, in this case n is equal to 10 because we are searching for 10 letter duplicates, then the time complexity for this approach would be order of mn. When we are saying that time complexity is order of mn, we are assuming that we can check for duplicates in the scene set in order of 1. We can implement that scene set using hash map. Now let's try to come up with a better approach in terms of time complexity. We will be making use of rolling hash method. In this method, we assign value 1 to A, then 2 to C, 3 to G and 4 to T. And using these assigned values, we compute the hash value for every valid 10 letter sequence. Note that we will not be making use of any library function to compute these hash values. Instead of that, we will be computing these values in the program itself. Let's try to understand as to how we can compute these hash values. Let's consider this example. We can use this method to compute these hash values. Here, first letter C has been assigned weight of 2 power 10. Then second letter A has been assigned weight of 2 power 9 and so on and so forth until last letter T which has been assigned weight of 2 power 1. The weights are multiplied with corresponding values of that character. For example, C has value of 2, therefore we do 2 power 10 into 2 plus 2 power 9 into 1 where 1 is value of character A plus 2 power 8 into 1 
where one is again value of character a we'll add all the remaining values in the same manner to compute the final hash value for this sequence therefore the final hash value for this sequence would be 2 power 10 into 2 plus 2 power 9 into 1 plus and so on 2 power 1 into 4 so the method that we just discussed computes the hash value for a given sequence but then what is rolling hash method let's continue with the same example to try and understand this rolling hash method after this particular sequence the next sequence we want to compute the hash value for would be this highlighted sequence right and how can we make use of previously computed hash value for computing hash value for this new sequence because we have shifted the 10 letter window only by one character there is a difference of only one character between old sequence and new sequence if you observe these nine letters are common between the old sequence and the new sequence only the letter T is added and letter C is removed and for these nine common letters we have already computed the hash value in the old sequence and we will be making use of that while computing the hash value for this new sequence so the first difference is letter C is removed in the new sequence now therefore we don't want to consider the hash value computed for character C and we remove that essentially what we have done is from the previously computed hash value we have removed this factor that is value of skipped character that would be 2 into 2 power 10 that is weight for character C also note that the remaining 9 characters which are common between these sequences these are shifted by one position in the new sequence so this particular A which was at second position in the old sequence is now at the first position in the new sequence similarly this character T which was at the last position in the old sequence is now at the second last position in the new sequence therefore to make use of these computed values all we need to do is we need to multiply these values by 2 if we multiply these values by 2 we are basically accommodating for the fact that these common letters are shifted by one position essentially in this step what we are doing is current hash is equal to current hash into 2 after considering for these two differences we have to also consider that the last letter T is added in the new sequence for computing the hash value for this letter T all we need to do is multiply the value 4 with the weight of the last character that would be 2 power 1 this third step completes the computation of new hash value using the previous hash value so just to recap we had the previous hash value that was the hash value computed for this particular sequence and for the new sequence we knew the newly added character that was T and skipped character that would be C knowing these values we have computed the current hash value using the previous hash value I hope you are now able to understand as to how to compute the new hash value from the previously computed hash value now let's look at the main algorithm which makes use of this rolling hash method in this algorithm what we do is we compute hash value for the sequence in the first window that would be first 10 letters and then store that computed value in a set or hash map how do we compute the hash value for this sequence we have already discussed that method in the previous slides all we need to do is we need to do 2 power 10 into 1 2 power 10 is weight for first letter and 1 would be the value of the first letter that would be a plus 2 power 9 into 1 because second letter is again a and that would have weight of 2 power 9 plus and so on till 2 power 1 into 2 where 2 would be the value of last character c and 2 power 1 would be the weight of last character once we compute the hash value for the sequence in the first window we store this value as 0 in hash map now for the next sequence we compute the hash value using rolling hash method we have just discussed the rolling hash method where current hash is equal to previous hash value that would be at 0 minus value of skipped character into 2 power 10 skipped character would be this first letter a the second step is current hash is equal to current hash into 2 and the final step is current hash is equal to current hash plus 2 into value of newly added character newly added character would be a again at the end of these three steps current hash value would be the hash value for this new sequence now if the newly computed value is already present in the hash map then we add the current sequence to the output set because at this point 
we know that we already have come across this particular sequence and therefore that hash value is already present in the hash map otherwise we store the newly computed hash value in the hash map in this case for this particular sequence the newly computed hash value say h1 won't be equal to h0 and therefore we would store that value in hash map the last step is we repeat step number 3 and 4 until all the 10 letter sequences are completed now when we continue with step number 3 and 4 in the same manner at this particular point of time the computed hash value for this new sequence would be same as h0 why because the sequence that we are looking at that is phi a's followed by phi c's is same as the first 10 letter sequence notice that first 10 letters are phi a's followed by phi c's and we have already computed and stored the hash value for that and as per the step number 4 if computed value is already present in the hash map that would be h0 then we add the current sequence to the output set so this particular sequence is now added to output we continue computing the hash values for all 10 letter sequences using this rolling hash method until this point and after this point we return the output set from the function once you understand this algorithm implementing this in code is very easy you can check out the complete code from github link that we have given in the video description please let us know if you have any queries or feedback in the comment section of this video don't forget to like subscribe and share this video with your friends thank you and cheers